You know, you all have sat around and allowed people like David Brock to exist in your midst and, and, and play the dirtiest of the dirty politics. But yet, and so somehow I'm really supposed to believe that you actually believe in grassroots people-driven movement and building power? That don't even make any sense. That don't even jive. Well, I mean, at, at a certain point, we have to acknowledge that the Democratic Party itself, like what it demands from people who oh, absolutely. Exist, exist within it is very problematic. I mean, even last night at, at Bernie Sanders' town hall meeting, he had to pay lip service to that Russia thing. And you know he like and it it was so it was so out of place. I don't think anyone really wanted to hear it, but he had like in the beginning it was very quick. Yeah, because I think we can all agree Russia did it. Blah blah blah. blah. Can we talk about the issues now? And it's just like it's that kind of demand that you like if you're gonna work if you're gonna work within our party if you're gonna help our party if you're gonna be a member of our party that you have to pay lip service to these sort of myths and whatever we say. You know like whether it be we need corporate money or we need or the russia the you know or enable this russia narrative even before we see substantive evidence it, it it becomes problematic it's like okay well if this is what the structure demands to work within it if you have to do these things to have a chance of success or even to be allowed your foot in the door is it really worth it you know like is, 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 is it worth it but I don't know if that's the issue of Bernie needing to pay lip service and do what Democrats need him to do, or as much as he and his people, he just don't have the right people still on his team, right? Because, like, he does, he'll say that, like, okay, yeah, 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 I can see that. Let's get back to the issues. That's like a standard line of his. It's like, in certain No, do it. Do yeah, 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 yeah. No, let's get back to the issues. Like, he just has that, like, standard, like, okay, yes, concede the point and get out the way. It's not even like, to me, it's like he's not even paying attention. They're not listening. And he has, excuse me, he has a lot of very out of touch people who still work for him because, or, or, or he has out of touch people who used to work for him, right? They think sucking up to the likes of David Brock is actually going to curry them favor and do something when it's like, you just really putting yourself out there looking kind of stupid. And the problem continues to be that Bernie Sanders is going to continue to be the titular head of this quote unquote movement, but it's going to be very limited and it's not going to be able to grow because they have not been able to move past the same problematic, you know, verbal interactions in the way he speaks. He lacks nuance still when he talks and he does things like that. There's no there's no reason like there's a way to handle that without without giving credence. Um, because I, I saw people responding to the interview I had, I did last night with Nick Branna. But people were like, Well, I'm I'm not interested in this idea because of what Bernie said about Russia last night. And it's like if you actually listen, it's less about Bernie, more about building a viable third party. Right. But but that Russia thing, it turns people off because it is it's still not sound and it's it's disheartening to hear come from. So I don't know that he's kissing the ring. I don't see that happening. I just think that he just uh, what well, am I talking about kissing the ring? I think I think I'm not talking about kissing the ring. I think I just think that Bernie Sanders and the Russian narrative are part of the same problem is that people going out of their way to enable the democratic elite. And again, even if, even if in like, it, at best it's duplicitous because out of one side of your mouth, they're saying, okay, yeah, she didn't campaign in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. NAFTA. Okay. Yeah. The democratic party is kind of out of touch. Okay. Yeah. We listen to the bubble, but Russia, but Russia. And it's like, even if you could, like it, Conceding that she would have lost anyway and that her campaign had had problems and then harping on Russia for another 20 minutes, like it comes across as well duplicitous. It's like you like you're trying to have your cake and eat too. You're trying to talk to the left, but also talk to the elite. You know, you're trying to have your cake, like either acknowledge that there was a a fatal flaw in Clinton as a candidate, and that that fatal flaw in Clinton is indicative of a fatal flaw in the Democratic establishment, or go full bore with the Russia thing and lose and lose again. Like, like you can't you like having both you can't play both sides on this one like it becomes well is it or is it not Ru entirely russia's fault is it or is it not entirely clinton's fault and russia had very little you know I mean, they didn't have the kind of sway that they either tried to have or didn't try to have if if we we could listen i i, I am i'm the hulk of amongst the amongst the group right and this is relative i'm not a hillary clinton hulk but i'm definitely not a you know peace at any cost guy um, I think we could actually, we should actually hold whoever it is, whoever it was, hold their asses accountable. But we can't do that because the Democrats are using this as a scapegoat for them losing. And so we can't adequately even focus on the intelligence if there even is any intelligence, because all the Democrats want to do is spend this as a way of attacking Donald Trump, who I think is a piece of shit. However, 
we can't we it's like we can't see the forest for the trees because the democrats are just so obsessed with blocking donald trump from inauguration like this did they actually think this was going to stop him from getting into the white house after the election i think some of them did and it's because of that type of thinking that we can't even look at the at the data or the intelligence about whoever it was, Russia or Costa Rica. I don't care who it was. Well, it's, it's also because they're pointing to the wrong damn people, too. You're blaming Abby Martin. You're blaming, you know, based on information that's not even recent, like a recent release that like, was like, in Russia today. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're blaming Abby Martin and then you're blaming, I forget the other young woman. There's another young woman that has some affiliations with hackers in that part of the world. And she has, she does work though for security agencies. And like she's had mixed issues because she was named and she's like, I didn't have anything to do with this. And she's like, on one hand, it's been some notoriety from being on the list. But then on the other hand, it's, it's kind of blocked her from being able to do business as well. Like you're messing with people's livelihood because you just carelessly, you know, tossing people's names around and stuff and that's a problem yeah let me yeah. come in on uh what you said there Noe, where you say you're not sure if it was kissing the ring or not i do believe that the democratic party does require people to carry oh, yeah. some sort of line oh i don't them. disagree i don't think yeah. bernie's doing that though I, I think he i think it, it might be a mix i think you know maybe he believes that kissing the ring is what he's supposed to do maybe the people are advising him that he should kiss the ring as some sort of you know, strategy to get something, you know, later in return. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on it, but the effect, the effect, you know, what he effectively does, you know, regardless of what his strategy is, it, it turns, it comes off as basically him kicking the ring. Mm -hmm. You know, because in the end, he toes a line. It's, it's, That's it's a good point. Thing, it's the same exact thing that we saw with Keith Ellison with that, that ridiculous letter on BDS with, with his, um, with, with everything that he's done, that he just took this, this right return. Uh, on his politics. I think that's 100% about kissing the ring and doing what he has to do for the power structure inside the Democratic Party. And I'm not saying that as an excuse for them. I'm saying that as an example of, you know, what you said, Brandon, like, at what point are you paying too high of a price even for entrance? And at what point do we start saying that, okay, Bernie Sanders, Keith Ellison are by, you know, constantly speaking out for the party are simply enabling them. It's like, at what point do you, you know, at what point do you, do you like, do they have to be held responsible? Like, okay, you're just enabling the party. Like, like how, like, at what point do you say, if they're going to still like Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer and Chuck Schumer, if they're going to still like play these games and their Bernie is going to go out there and advocate for them at, at some point, like, then I have to say he's enabling them. I do think that we are at some point being a little too hard on the IC, you know, the intelligence community. For their report, I really enjoyed the last two IC sixth grade book reports. Um, I mean, to be, to, be, to, be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, their last one, how the Russians stole the election, was not as good as their first one on "Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret." But I'm looking forward to their third one. Like, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, you know, see, they have a lot of promise. 